Hello, and welcome to Dr. Voices, where doctors come to teach and where patients come to learn. Uh, today we're going to talk about sciatica, which is pain that starts in the low back and radiates down into the leg. I'm very fortunate to have one of my mentors, Dr. Ricky Singh, here with us as our, as our guest. Uh, Dr. Singh uh, uh, earned his medical degree from George Washington University. He went on to complete a residency in physical medicine and rehabilitation at UPenn. And then lastly, he uh, did a fellowship in interventional spine and sports medicine at the University of Colorado. Currently, Dr. Singh is uh, Director of Interventional Spine at Wild Cornell Medical Center, and he is an expert on this subject matter. So sciatica, which goes by many names, it's also referred to as radiculopathy, or many patients know it as a, a pinched nerve, uh, is an issue that plagues many of our patients. And unfortunately, many people don't really know what's going on uh, in their own spine, in their own back, uh, when they're experiencing this pain. So first, Dr. Singh, would you mind uh, briefly just going over what's going on in the spine, in the back, uh, when patients are feeling sciatica? First of all, thank you, Dr. Chu, for having me on the show. This is a great opportunity to talk about spine and back health. Um, so to answer your question, basically what happens in the spine is there are bones that are hard substances that keep us upright. In between these bones are these flexible soft segments. They're called intervertebral discs. Think of these kind of as jelly donuts. That's how I explain them to my patients. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the jelly inside this donut squirts out, also called the disc herniation or disc bulge. A lot of these names are used interchangeably. Mm -hmm. If they irritate a nerve, patients report back pain radiating down their leg into their foot. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what's known as sciatica. Sciatica, however, is kind of a misnomer. Sciatica technically means inflammation of the sciatic nerve. But any time a patient experiences back pain going into the leg, they call it sciatica. Mm -hmm. Really, that's called radiculopathy, as you said, mm -hmm. radicular pain, radiculitis, mm -hmm. um, caused by a pinched nerve. Excellent. Now let's take a closer look at the spine model for more detail. So again, here's the spine model. Here's the front of the spine, and here's the back. These are the bones called vertebral bodies that keep us upright. And these are those flexible, soft segments in between each bone called intervertebral discs. Coming out of the spine at each side are these nerves. These are the nerves that go into your legs, maybe into the bottom of your foot, your big toe, the side of your thigh. And when these discs bulge or protrude or herniate and pinch one of these nerves, patients report, as we were calling, sciatica or radicular pain. So once someone is diagnosed with sciatica or radiculopathy, there are many non-surgical treatments available. Dr. Singh, would you mind going into uh, some of the physical therapy and rehabilitation uh, modalities available uh, for patients suffering from this condition? Once a patient is diagnosed with sciatica or radicular pain, and again, remember that disc has kind of come out and is pinching a nerve. The goals of rehabilitation and physical therapy are to bring that disc back to where it was naturally. Mm -hmm. What this will do is take the pressure off that disc, relieving the leg symptoms. Physical therapy works to strengthen the core muscles. Mm -hmm. Think of your spine as a construct. Mm -hmm. If we can strengthen the muscles in front, mm -hmm. on the side, and behind the spine, mm -hmm. it'll take that compressive force off the disc, create negative pressure, and that disc will slowly go back in. With time, with rehabilitation, with core and abdominal strengthening, mm -hmm. this disc will go back to where it was originally, the pressure off the nerve will come off, and patient symptoms will gradually regress. So make sure to stay tuned on our channel uh, we're going to have specific videos uh, detailing the exact exercises and techniques you can do at home uh, and with your physical therapist to help relieve your back pain. Uh, so Dr. Singh, my next question for you is, uh, what are some of the common medications uh, that uh, physicians can prescribe to help augment the physical therapy and rehabilitation process? So in order to facilitate the healing process to manage symptoms, Oftentimes, we prescribe various medications to help with pain. Mm -hmm. Now, while these medications aren't cures on their own, if I can decrease the pain of a patient, mm -hmm. I believe they'll be able to participate in physical therapy more, improve their core strengthening. Mm -hmm. If the pain is a burning pain or stinging electric pain, sometimes we use neuropathic medications, mm -hmm. some like gabapentin, Neurontin, Lyrica, and these varieties. Of course, managing any drug-drug interactions and monitoring any adverse events from the medications. Anti-inflammatories are also commonly used. Motrin, Aleve, Advil as the generics, mm -hmm. and then some prescription medications. Etodilac, Meloxicam, Celebrex. Again, making sure the patient doesn't have a history of acid reflux. 
If pain is very, very severe, some doctors tend to use an oral steroid medication. Now, while the data on this is not great in terms of managing radiculopathy, mm -hmm. we found that this does manage the symptoms pretty well, allowing the patients to participate in physical therapy. Now, my next question actually has to do with epidural injections. Now, we're going to have a whole other video on our channel uh, going into the specifics and details regarding epidural injections. But Dr. Singh, would you mind just giving a brief overview of what epidural injections are and how they might benefit patients in this scenario? If medications and those types of modalities don't offer the patients symptomatic relief, another treatment option is an epidural steroid injection. Basically, the goal is to deliver the medication to the problematic area to minimize inflammation. Now, I tell patients this every time. This is not a cure of your disc herniation. But if, again, if I can decrease the pain, I can allow you to go to therapy in a much more pain-free situation, uh, you're likely to recover faster. So epidural steroid injections offer us putting the medication where the pathology is, where the disc herniation is, at the side of the pinched nerve, alleviating symptoms, mm -hmm. decreasing inflammation, and allowing the patient to become more functionally mobile. Now, lastly, Dr. Singh, would you mind talking about some of the red flags in back pain um, that might alert a patient that they need to call their doctor or potentially even go to the ER? The most important part about any patient evaluation is the history and physical exam. So when I'm listening to the patient's story, the things that I'm looking for are, does the patient have progressive weakness? Is their foot flapping? Are they tripping over themselves? Are they having balance issues? Do they have bowel and bladder control problems? Are they having accidents? Fever, night sweats, weight loss. These are the kinds of red flags that I'm listening for to alert the need for emergent imaging. Or well, if the patient senses these symptoms, they should contact one of their doctors sooner. Thank you so much, Dr. Singh. That was really fantastic. I also want to thank all of you for watching. When you get a chance, please subscribe to our channel and also visit us on the web at drvoices.com. Today, there's a lot of information on the web, uh, a lot of health care, a lot, a lot of health information on the internet, and it's difficult to know uh, who you can trust. Dr. Voices is different in that it's a resource completely created by physicians and other healthcare professionals. Um, if you're a physician watching, you know, we welcome you to please come to our website and uh, we're looking uh, for your submissions, we're looking to hear your voice. If you're a patient, please come, explore our website and come to learn. We build this resource for you. Thank you again for watching.